teaching may take time. You need to be patient. Rule for, this is from the 250 amazing fishing tips. Rule for, rule, rule for waiting. When he pulls, you don't. When he doesn't, you do. When he pulls, you don't. Because if he's pulling back, don't go attack them. No, no, you don't know. I want you to get saved. No, I don't want your religion. Don't pull. Listen. Wait. It is a dance. Fishing is a dance. You need to wait. You got to feel it. You got to touch it. You got to be like, okay. It's a sensitive subject. You are dealing with someone's soul. Just because you have your personal agenda, you know how to do it. It doesn't mean you are a great fisherman. I met this, this couple years ago. They had been in Turkey for seven years. And I asked them, I always ask them, and it's very embarrassing for a lot of missionaries. I say, in seven years, how many people you led to Christ? How many people you discipled? And she started crying. Seven years. One of the reasons they started hanging out with their own kind, missionaries, with missionaries. They didn't go to the fish. They were scared of fishing. And they stayed in their house and they held hands together and they prayed. I said, you could do that in America. You could stay in your house. You, it would save you a plane ticket. That's right. Amen. She's like, but it's, it, we are in a Muslim world. It's a scary country. What would we do? How would, I said, did you hug anybody? Did you try going to the marketplace, just having a conversation? Did you just be with them and going and praying around their environment? Have you? Well, we have done some and nothing happened and we just got discouraged. Seven years later, she knew every food kind and everything on the menu of a Turkish, in a Turkish restaurant. The hummus, the tabbouleh and the lamb and everything. Everything she knew. She, they knew everything they could, where they could eat and they could have fun. But they didn't know anything about the fish. And it said in my heart, and I want you to know, I said to them, they were going to go back. I said, don't go back. And then they said, can you help us? I said, okay, we're going to fish. And then four, great fishermen engage the fish. You gotta engage the fish. What happens, something happens with us when we become Christians. When we, we are at the beginning, you know, I was, uh, when I got saved, I was still a floozy woman. So I was like still engaged with the world, right? But it backfired on me. So it backfires on you. Then what you say is I need to separate from the world and I need to grow, that's fine. But there is a time you need to be ready to engage the fish. You need to engage, you need to talk to them. We are so scared of, of them. We are scared of people. There is a fear factor in evangelism. We fear people. But I want to tell you something even worse than that. We don't like people. People don't, I'm going to tell you, this is a big revelation. People don't like people. Turn to your neighbor. Look at them. There's a people sitting next to you. Right? There are people everywhere. There are. You cannot get rid of them. You go to a market, they are there. You go to a restaurant, they are there. Look at, you know how I know people don't like people? There are at least two chairs between you and the next person. You don't like to touch. You don't like to be in that close proximity with people. There's my space thing. It bothers you. Why are you, why you are so close to me? If somebody is at the register in a supermarket, they come like, especially during the COVID, during the pandemic, they come like this. I'm like, are you kidding me? Now I have a good excuse. If you don't like people, you have a good excuse during the season. Some people, they told me, oh, I haven't seen, my friend told me this, I ha we haven't seen my mother-in-law for six months. And then she goes, hallelujah. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> oh, we don't like people. You need to learn to love them. Amen. You need to really love people with their sweat, with their smell, with their look, with their attitude, with their mannerism. We need to learn to love people. If anything, you need to ask Jesus, ask baptism of love in your life, baptism of compassion to give you. I, I'm telling you, forget being an evangelist or fisherman. You cannot be a minister without loving people. We need to love people. Love and care for people. Other day, I was in Barnes and Nobles, and this girl was sitting far away, and she was crying. And I had a meeting, but I said, no, I cannot leave this girl crying. And I went up to her. I'm like, honey, why are you crying? She's like, if I were as young as you, I wouldn't have any problems. <laughs> that wasn't true. But why are you crying? And then we started talking. I invited her to my table. Joshua and I ended up praying for her. And they, that night she came to our Bible, I mean, Dream Divergence class. She asked me, I was doing everything not to lead her to the Lord. Yeah, this is the same thing I do on TV. Because people know we are there to convert. Like it is, it is dollars from Dutch Mark. We're going to convert the money. <laughs> We're going to convert them. There's such a wrong language or terminology to convert people. We convert nobody. So I like people to put their guards down. I'm not here to convert anybody. I'm not going to, because salvation is a supernatural experience. We sat down, she asked us, who are you? We were like, we were not talking. You know, we were talking about Jesus, but we weren't trying anything. I said, we are two angels. We are working for our wings. That's why we called you to our table. She started laughing from crying. Then the door was open. Amen. And I said, I'm going to tell you a secret. Please don't freak out if we suddenly disappear or start flying in this place. We don't want to scare you. And this girl lost it. But I want you to know, I, I love fishing. You see, if you do it so really chillax instead of, oh, today, I'm going to go fishing. <laughs> Let's see. No. I'm going to enjoy. I'm going to have fun. Fishing is a hobby. It's relaxing. And it becomes a passion. Fishermen are passionate people. They hold their fish. They take a picture. I was married to one. I used, he used to come home and he, said, he used to tell me, Honey, take my picture. And I will take his picture. He's take it from here. Take it from there. <laughs> take this too, baby. Look, look, look. You need to engage the fish. Jacob's well was there. And Jesus, tired as he was from the journey, sat down by the well. It was about noon. When a Samaritan woman came to draw water, Jesus said to her, Will you give me a drink? Je Jesus Christ engaged the fish. And then the conversation started. Five, great fishermen don't mind to get dirty. Fishing is a dirty sport, dirty game, dirty calling. You're going to get dirty. I'm telling you. You know, what is, a, what is the, that thing that call on fish that you clean up with a spoon? Scales. Thank you. So I learned a new word today. Thank you, guys. But you know what happens? We had scales in the bed, on the bed. Scales. He smelled fish. And he used to spray himself with the perfumes and everything, colognes and all that. He smelled fish. He slept with fish in the boat. Fish were everywhere. We have a saying in Turkey, in the Middle East, it shows how much you love seafood. If my father comes from the sea, I will eat it. But after being married to him for two years, I don't know my father, but even Fish itself walks into my house. For a while, I don't want to eat fish. 
Jesus ate with tax collectors and prostitutes. He touched the sick and smelling bad. You know, I really thank God for mirroring to this man because I went to prison with him without shoplifting. <laughs> we went to the prison and in the prison, we ministered to prisons, prisoners. And we learn about them. We went to, we did street ministry. I'm telling you, if you start doing street ministry, you're doing street church, you will never like here. This is too sophisticated. Anyone, this is not a very sophisticated church. You guys are not coming here suit and ties. A lot of people are wearing open toe shoes. You are not even wearing shoes. <laughs> She is wearing ripped pants. I mean, we have a mercy ministry. We need to get her. She's one of our main leaders. We need to get her pants. I mean, this is a very casual church, but I know churches that you go, people wear heads. They wear carrots, not orange ones, the real carrots. Yeah, you know those people? I don't. So. Jesus said, be clean immediately. Six, when you are becoming a great fisherman, expect the unexpected. Because when you're waiting for some kind of fish, shark may come. Shark may come to you. Then the struggle is going to be bigger. That struggle is going to be bigger. So you're going to pull the fish back. He's going to pull you, try to pull you in. I want to tell you, once you change your dimension, you lost the game. I know people that they, go to the, they went to the bars. I had a friend who, who were fishing in the bars. But the fish came so big. So big fish, sharks came. She completely fell into the world. And she completely lost everything. Her calling, her walk, everything. I told her, be careful. And she, she was telling me, when I am drunk, Holy Spirit ministers through me better. That was the last time I talked with her. Because she didn't listen. She said, we need to go to their level. Yes, you go to their level, but you don't go to their dimension. When you go to their dimension, you will lose it then fish will win you into his dimension. You're going to pull back. And I want to tell you, sometimes when you are pulling back, you're going to struggle. That is prevailing prayer. Without prevailing prayer, you cannot become a great fisherman. You're going to pull the fish. Maybe that fish is in your family. Maybe you have a prodigal son. Maybe you have a prodigal daughter or husband. You're going to start pulling in because you want to bring that fish into your dimension. But it doesn't happen in the real realm that you are looking at. You need to do it. You need to prevail and travail from your realm in the spirit. Most of the time, we wrestle in the flesh. And that is why we lose, we lose our loved ones. I hated my mother. I hated my father. When I got saved, I spoke to them with that kind of hateful language. And I told my father one day, and I said to him, we were having this conversation or argument, it turned into a fight, you know, it's very easy in the Middle East. So I told my father, you're a womanizer, you're a disgusting pervert, and you're going to go to hell without Jesus. He said, go look at the mirror and tell me if you want your own Jesus. That broke me. Four years later of that day, I led my father to the Lord at a conference. He was the last person I would think that ever gets saved. Gave his life gloriously, Jesus, because I became a different person. I start loving my father. You cannot lead someone to Christ without loving them. You need to love them to lead them. I learned to love my father. I learned to love my mom. I learned to honor them. And I, that love God used to bring to them to Christ. 
I learned to honor them. Even he wasn't an honorable man, but he became an honorable man now. He's a good man now. You gotta look at the fish. You know, people look at you. They see you where you are at. But God looks at you and he sees what you're going to be. You're gonna start looking at those fish, what they're gonna become. And stop belittling them. Seven, the last one. No, last one before last. Great fisherman partner. They had to partner with the other group to get bigger fish. There was a divine, supernatural synergy fishing together. You want to bring big fish, you need to learn to fish together. That's why our fishing team, they go to the highways and the byways and the parks and places and talk to people and pray over people and lead people to the Lord. They do it in a group. Fishermen likes to hang out with fishermen. They like him. What did you catch? I catch this. I catch, I caught a Muslim. <gasps> wow. <laughs> what did you use? What kind of bait did you use? <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Love, miracles, fruit. They are all baits. Signs and wonders. It's all Holy Spirit. Luke 5, they signaled their partners in the other boat to come and help them. And they came and filled both boats, so full that they began to sing. 8, once you catch the fish, don't throw it back. Clean it. That is discipleship. And that is great commission. You disciple the fish. You clean the fish. That is the last one, because you don't clean the fish before you catch it. It's amazing how God uses our past to build our future. Peter was a fisherman. He was an unschooled man. He didn't have a PhD in theology. He didn't have any doctorate degree from any d divinity. He didn't go to a seminary. And he didn't read much books, maybe not. But Jesus saw something in him. And he said, follow me. I will make you fishers of men. And Jesus wasn't lying when he called him. He was a hard-headed, impulsive guy. He would jump on anything that Jesus asked. And at the end, he denied Jesus three times. But it was not the end. It was the beginning. Yes. How many times with our behaviors, with our attitudes, with our actions, we denied Christ. Don't look down on Peter. Simon's, Simon means moody. Peter means rock solid that Simon Moody Simon became rock to Peter because he followed him and Jesus told him how to fish and then when the day of Pentecost came Peter caught 3,000 men on the day of Pentecost, he caught 3,000 fish that he had never caught in his life. He caught the fish that they were like in thousands in front of him because he had to leave his ways and follow God's way, God's example, God's love. He stood up in front of everybody and he, there was danger, there was fear, there was persecution, there was opposition. And he stood and preached the gospel boldly. And 3,000 gave their lives that day to Jesus Christ. And they got added to their numbers. God is asking you today, we are opening the altars. How many people here want to become great fishermen? 
and before even that I should have asked. I am throwing the net right now. You know, this was a net fishing. That wasn't a bait fishing that day. He threw the net. 3,000 fish jump. So I'm asking right now if there is any fish in this room that you haven't given your life to Jesus Christ <laughs> and you want to receive Christ as your Lord and Savior. There is no gimmick here. I am not going to convert you to anything. <sighs> I just feel the anointing of salvation in this room right now. Come to the front to receive Christ as your Lord and Savior. Don't be ashamed. You never invited Jesus into your heart before, or you invited, you don't even know if you are really caught. Repeat this after me. Dear Lord Jesus, I come to you right now. I confess that you are my Lord and Savior. I believe that you died on the cross for my sins and rose from the dead on the third day because of my faith in you I am a child of God and I have eternal life and I am born again please forgive all my sins I repent from all of them and give me a new life and a new heart from this day on be the center of my life in your name Jesus I pray amen and amen and amen now I pray for each and every one of you whether you're an evangelist you are called to be a missionary so many people here called for the mission nations and God is saying from this day on I am gonna make you fisher salt man Amen. from this day on you're gonna love fishing from this day on you are not gonna mind to get dirty from this day on hallelujah I pray in Jesus Christ that God will give you extraordinary wisdom, yeah. knowledge and understanding, yeah. compassion and love yeah. to catch many, many, many fish for him. Today I declare and decree that you become a fisher of man yeah. in the name of Jesus Christ. This man, Muslim man, wrote to me and he said, thank you for preaching the gospel. I lived my life like an animal. And first time since I gave my life to Jesus Christ, I know how I am loved as a human. First time I found my value and my worth in Christ. You know, when you receive one message like that, oh, that gives you the biggest fulfillment and joy. How many times in your life have you heard of a former Muslim woman starting a church in America? Ishak Abla, a former Muslim woman turned Christian evangelist, recently started a church here in America. Over the years, Ishik Abla has reached the Muslim world with the love of Christ through television programs and social media. Ishik's TV programs are broadcast to over 200 countries on six continents and a Facebook following of more than 7 million people. In 2016, Ishik started Virtual Church, Dream Church, an online video broadcast on Facebook Live where all colors, tribes, and nations can unite with God's love. 
All over the world, people from all nations started watching her broadcasts and engaging with her and her team. And now Dream Church is being watched in Egypt, Iraq, Afghanistan, Saudi Arabia, Pakistan, India, Kenya, England, Germany, Sweden, America, Canada, Latin America, and much more. And recently, Ishik felt that God was calling her to expand Dream Church to not only be an online broadcast, but a real church in Virginia Beach, Virginia. You can get the people out of slavery, but you cannot get the slavery out of people unless they want to be free. You are a free man, no matter who you are and where you are, and you can be even called slave in another part of the world, but you can be the most freest man. Absolutely incredible. First of all, where did the, this vision, this dream for Dream Church you know, come from? People started writing to us from Afghanistan, from Saudi Arabia, from Iraq, all over the world. They started saying, I am not fulfilled where I am at, or I cannot go to a church because I am in a very radical Muslim environment. People started saying, this is my church. This is my dream church. And we started virtually. Then God called me to turn that virtual church into an actual church. I have seen so many free men in prison that I haven't seen it even outside of prison. Why? Because they surrender their lives to Jesus Christ and in prison walls, they live as free men. This is something that is going to grow mm. and it is going to be a worldwide what God wants His people to experience His love. I love it. And yes. I love the, just the freedom because I've seen some of yes. the online services. It's just the freedom and the joy. Talk about some ways that you're seeing God move in yes. the church. Our uh, vision is to empower people, mm -hmm. activate people. And tonight God wants to release your identity to you because there are people sitting here tonight with a potential but have lost their roar. Ultimately, we are looking for revival. We Amen. are praying for revival Amen. and great awakening. What's your dream for Dream Church? My dream is everybody that comes feels the love of God. They feel like they are part of a family of God. And my dream for Dream Church is for revival fire to be ignited in all nations. When you are going through a time and you feel like nothing and no one can help or understand. Something happens suddenly. A touch, a breeze, or in a form of a wind, he comes and changes everything with one touch. At that moment, you know that you know your life is never going to be the same again.